Hey, somebody's got to help me find Middle C. Mm, me, 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 me. Excellent. Good morning, afternoon, or evening. You are listening to The Professional Noticer. Here, you and I will use common sense and all the wisdom we can muster to move beyond what is true and go all the way to the truth. With actual listeners in more than 100 countries, I am the professional noticer. Hello, everyone. I'm Andy Andrews. Hey, thank you for making me a part of your week. My purpose here today and with every show we do is to play the part of a best friend or a coach. I want to help you live the life of your wildest dreams by giving you access to the greatest mentors the world has to offer today. The Professional Noticer is sponsored this week by GrowingDeer.com. If you already watch Growing Deer episodes or regularly visit the GrowingDeer.com website, you already know why moi, the Professional Noticer, is a big fan. You know, Growing Deer is about so much more than Growing Deer. (laughs) Wildlife biologist Dr. Grant Woods is a buddy and he hosts every week's program and the subjects range from scientific tips about providing the right crops for deer to eliminating predators or you might see a show about making jerky. Dr. Grant's wife, Tracy, as well as their daughters, Riley and Ray, make frequent appearances. The whole operation is just a great example for all of us about how family can work together, play together and support each other. And whether you're an outdoor person or not, Certainly, you know an outdoor person, okay? So turn them on to GrowingDeer.com, and you go check it out, too. It's the best. It's Growing Deer TV at GrowingDeer.com. Observations and answers, that's what we do here on The Professional Noticer. And sometimes we bring people in who have great observations. Sometimes we bring people in who have great answers. Sometimes both. But I got to tell you, today... Today, I'm almost nervous because one of my very best friends, uh, the answer to one of my life's questions is with me. I had somebody ask me uh, the other day, I have been asked this several times, they've said, um, who, who impresses you? And... And I have said consistently over the past number of years that our guest today is the wisest woman I have ever met. Please welcome Gloria Gaither. Hi, Hi, Andy. How are you doing? Good. I can't. Well, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you taking the time to do this. So I, if you know for if if you've been living under a rock somewhere and don't have have a passing familiarity with Gloria Gaither, Gloria, do you have any idea how many songs you've written? How many lyrics there, to song? Uh, we uh, the last count was seven hundred, but that's a long uh, seven, you know a long time ago. Like, right? Yeah, probably. I don't know. Uh, it's hard to keep track. I maybe should put my uh, a list of my unforgettable songs and then a longer list of my forgettable songs. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the people most people recognize because he lives. There's something about that name, something beautiful. The difference is in me. You know, I was unaware that you wrote the difference is in me, and I listen to that probably five times a week. <laughs> I do. I listen to that. I think Wes Hampton sings that song, and I, yeah. I, I don't know why. I but that I gravitate to that song, and I listen to that in the mornings. The difference is in me, and and I'll tell you another song I didn't know that you had written that I listen to all the time is "Until I Found the Lord," yep. and I listen to that song. With Jason Crabb singing at the Brooklyn Tabernacle with that 200 member African American choir behind him. Oh yeah. my gosh. So, anyway. Well, those are two, uh, those probably are two songs that a lot of people don't know even. So, it's kind of fun. Um, I've, we've written a lot of things for children or things that could be. Um, we wrote a musical one time called Kids Under Construction, and the whole idea was. The grown-ups and the children are 
equally kids under construction. And I don't like to put adults in situations where they're telling the kids how to do life because my experience is more often than not, the kids tell me how to do life. <laughs> and so it was real. The musical was really scrambled because a lot of the wisdom was coming from children. And so everybody was doing everything together in right. uh, there was a curriculum that went with it. And I intended the curriculum for backyard Bible schools where you just got, you're living in a condo or in a neighborhood and all the kids end up in your yard and right. you, you know, what do you do with them? And they're everything from two year olds to teenagers. And so it was constructed so that that span and the adults that were trying to, you know, have fun with the kids in the yard would all be on the same page. But I really, I really feel like a lot of those songs that you just mentioned, I sort of wrote with that bre breach, that, that um, span in mind right. to breach that gap and say, you know, the differences in me is a good example that I just like, okay, what changes when you find Jesus, whether you're four years old, as I was when I found the Lord at, or, you know, 80, you know, everything is different. Everything is new. It's always been there. And you like the veil over your eyes, the Bible uses that veil metaphor a lot. And I love that. And, you know, like, it's like, you're doing like, like kissing through a hairnet. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. then suddenly you say, like, oh, so this is kissing, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And that, and that is, I call that conversion. Anybody can call it whatever you want. But when you discover that God has a brighter way for you to live, um, that is not the world's value system. It's upside down. Like the children teach, and the and the poor are rich, and the and the um, those who have been disadvantaged are the most advantaged. All of a sudden, just because of that connection with our with the God of our, our of our lives, the God of our universe. Right. Yeah. You know, I don't know if this will be the last adoring statement I make about you on this interview, but I have to oh, say, keep coming, keep coming. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have to say that I think of you every day because in my office is one of my favorite family photos of all time. And it's when you and Bill and Benji and Melody were at our house and we were out on the dock and, and you're holding Benji and Mel's brand new baby and you're sitting in the swing there in the gazebo, and Polly is sitting on the floor underneath you, and she's looking up and smiling, and you're looking down at Polly and smiling. And I, I to this day, I look at that picture, and I think, there is not a better situation I could ever wish for for my family than to have my wife listening to this woman. And I, I think that every day. When I say that. And so I, I wouldn't <laughs> listen to I, her instead. <laughs> well, I probably wouldn't uh, do any other interview with this question because I, I wouldn't know where it would go and it wouldn't be worth it probably. But with you, I will ask this question. So, Gloria, what you've been thinking about lately? I just like to hear anything you're thinking about. I mean, I always like to. And so I'm going to do it here. What, what have you been thinking about lately? Well, I, I've I've been thinking for a long time, but I think with all the stuff going on in the world and in you know the the chaos in our political framework and COVID and all this stuff that is worldwide, not here. It, right. It has it has it is. I'll use a farm term: shucked it down, shucked the corn down to the real grain right here. Yeah. Yeah. What is important, and it's brought up a topic that's been my theme. My probably my whole life is what lasts forever. And it's made me ask more, more and more in a really practical way. What am I doing today? This minute talking to you, whatever, is there any eternity in it? And even the stuff like peeling potatoes and scrubbing the commode uh, where it, it, I have to say, okay, what is eternal here? And my mind goes, Okay, I'm creating an atmosphere in which this family that I love 
is coming in and out. And I want them to know that this home, this atmosphere is something else, something more. And that has to do with the smells and the, you know, what you smell when you come in the door is the, you know, is the pot roast on, is the cherry pie baking, um, is the music playing and what kind of music is it, is it, is it saying, oh, I can exhale now, I'm home. Okay, so to me, everything gets reduced to how can I make this a forever statement? How can I make this eternal? And I ask that about relationships when I get very small and, and, and uh, picky and, and mm, making a big fuss out of things that really don't matter. I like to ask myself, does this really matter in the light of eternity? Because I don't think eternity is out there. Right. That's the thought I want to get to with you. I think eternity is here. And the transition is no big deal, as Jay Cass used to say. I think the veil between here and there is so sheer, you can see right through it. And and I... I I feel this when the homecoming people are all together singing. I say, and if you look at the picture of videos that are on with all those homecoming people, probably two thirds of them are not here. They're gone, right. but they're not gone. And, it, and we're both singing. I don't think it matters which side we sing on this side or that side, but the more we can understand that everything is eternal, that matters. So, you know, whether I, you know, I'm fixing supper for a whole crowd or I'm just fixing supper for Bill or whether we're writing a song or whether we're traveling and trying to, you know, do something public. Actually, I think my public life is the lesser of my lives. Um, and if something isn't happening in our private life, you, you can't expect anything to be transmitted to an audience in a public life. So if it's going to ring true, you have to, you have to keep asking. I have to keep asking myself is, is this what, what today will last forever? That doesn't mean you don't have to still buy water softeners and get the roof fixed. It just means that you understand the things that matter is how you deal with the roof fixer or the guy who came, comes to install the water softener. You know, we often say to artists, you know, it's more important what happens at McDonald's after the concert than it is what happens on the stage at the concert. Wow. So, you know, if somebody that was at the concert is having to stop by for a hamburger and you do too, your attitude toward each other, you don't even know they're there. You don't know they're watching and you shouldn't. You shouldn't have to have get yourself cleaned up for an audience person who's across the room, just your regular life. You know, Andy, there's, I love the word integrity because it means to integrate all the pieces of your life. You know, my piece is a mother, my piece, you know, is a gardener out there digging in the dirt. My key, my piece trying to train this baby puppy we have, uh, calling my children, giving advice to people who come stop by and say, what should I do about this? Um, a teenage boy who says, you know, I don't fit in at school. Can you help me? I, don't, I, I, am I just not, am I not worthy? What's, why don't the kids like me? Okay. Well, it's like, okay, their values and your values are not the same values. Don't expect that to sink. But, but integrity means that no matter what, view of Andy Andrews I have this one talking with public watching or you know the the big seafood bash you did on your on your deck when we were all there and little Liam sitting in your outside you know bed mattress you know that big swing you have out on your porch you know whatever it it should all be the same person the Andy there, the Andy here, the Anders, Andy someplace else. Right. And I look at you and say, you are a man of integrity, whether you're speaking to a motivational audience for General Motors or whether you're talking to the two of us here or if the audience was, weren't here, if we were having coffee at Starbucks. 
it ought to be all the same Andy. Right. And, and so that is because you have committed your life to something eternal. So that eternity piece gets everything in sync, you know, where you got, what is that on graphs? I don't know the term where the lines are all over and then you keep adjusting until all the lines are straight. In, in I know what you're talking about, but I don't know the word I don't either. Know what that's called. But anyway, that, that is what Jesus should do to our lives. He should bring into sync all the pieces that we are so that our business dealings, our re- interactions with our neighbors, the way we park our car on the street, whether we leave it half hanging out or take half of somebody else's space instead of bothering to straighten it up, you know, whatever, it's all the same Andy. It's all the same Gloria. It's all the same Bill. That, that is what Jesus does. If we're serving him, everything is eternal. You see things in a totally different perspective. Right. So that if you die, which, you know, a bunch of us have died from COVID and probably some more will, and it might be me. Then, then I don't have to worry about, oh, you know, they're going to find this in my notes or they're going to find this in my files or they're going to, you know, I don't have to worry about that. Right. Because I've been living in forever already. Yeah. Wow. And forever wow. just goes on. So my little my little mental thing I say to myself all day long is think forever. That is so good. That is so good. I you know, some of my it, some of my my greatest boosts of thinking have been attached to yours. You have sent me down pathways so many times. And I I don't know how anybody could express themselves the way you do and and not think as deeply as you do. I, I, I think those two just go together. But I remember one time, in fact, uh, Jimmy Yeary and I talk about this a lot. Uh, I love Jimmy. Isn't he a sweetheart? Just so great. You know, he had that uh, number one recently with Tim McGraw's song, I Called Mama. And yeah. and uh, but we were uh, in a room with you and Bill and several others. And I remember David Phelps' sister was not doing well. And it was mm-hmm. apparent that, you know, she was going to pass away. And David was understandably having a tough time with it. And we were there quietly listening as he talked. And you talked to David, a couple other people, you know, said a couple of things. But there was a moment where you said to David, you said, David, your sister is getting ready to breathe. She's getting ready to breathe. She was... You know, she was very happy inside her mama at one point, and but that became uncomfortable, and she had to get ready to breathe. And then, and now she's been happy in this body for a long time, but now she is getting ready to breathe again. And when you said that, the room was quiet, and Jimmy and I looked at each other from across the room, and it. It was one of these moments that I, I just I will never forget. And I after after we all kind of went our separate ways, I told Jimmy I said, I have to think about that. I've I've got to write something to do with that. And I I put a chapter in the notice of returns, writing that entire concept, thinking that out. And and when you mentioned a few minutes ago about the thin veil between here and there. One of the things that I thought to express on what you said was uh, was the line, when she takes her last breath here, she'll take her next breath there. Mm-hmm. And, and think how that'll fill her lungs. Right. <laughs> that, that breath. But I had never heard 
I never heard that expressed. And I've I've since had the opportunity to speak at a at a couple of uh, life celebrations and a couple of times for dads who were, you know, younger and had younger children. And I was able to explain, you know, because I, I said, I, I said to the, the congregation there at that funeral, I said, um, you know, when our parents died, when my mom and dad died, my sister and I were sitting where you are sitting right there. And the one thing I remember about that is they talked to everybody but us. They, nobody talked to us. And so today, I just want to talk to you. And so everybody else can listen, but I want to talk to you. And I want to explain what happened with your dad. And, and, that, and so I've told your story there that, that you planted in me. And it hit, and I'm just kind of shocked. People come up and go, I never thought of that. And I say, yeah, that's Gloria Gaither. You know, uh, there's another that brings up another experience I've had, and they're very similar. One is sitting beside my two daughters and my daughter-in-law. I was there when all my grandchildren were born. Right. And and that moment when when that little hand gets handed from eternity into this life. And then I've been also, I have sat beside Bill's dad, Bill's mom, my dad, my mother, those dearest people in my whole life, now my sister. Um, when they were going from this life to the next. And those are so similar. Do you know those those little doggy doors that you put on your on your right. back room where, right. or the garage where the dog can just come in? There's a... a thick plastic you know flap right and the dog can come in and it fl it flaps back okay it's like that for a moment the flap opens for a moment from eternity or to eternity going in or out and the i'm going to call it the angel dust of eternity gets on you and for a moment Life gets real. You say, this is it. This is life. Whether you're taking the hand of a, of a baby into this world or handing off the hand of someone you love into the next, for a moment, you are transformed. And you can never think about life again exactly like that. And, and I got that from my mother. She said, when a baby is born and when somebody dies, you get real for a moment. The rest of life, you're in La La Land. <laughs> wow. But you're not the same. You're not the same. That moment is, and sometimes it's from horrible pain and agony from cancer or, you know, they're, they're doped up with, hair, with some kind of painkiller or, you know, whatever they have to use. But for a moment, there is that flap opening. And with a baby, I mean, a Suzanne, uh, you know, we didn't know if she was going to be able to deliver a little Will. And we named him Will because he shouldn't have been here. I mean, with her circumstances before he was born. And when he made that cry, when he came out and made that cry, it was like, he was like going overboard to say, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm here, I'm, you know. And he took that big lung full of air out of the womb and that's what it's going to be like. I, I, but I think for us to experience that as human beings and could ever be the same again, you got to be, you know, thick headed or something. You got to, <laughs> you know, to not be transformed by that moment. Yeah. And the thing is, we are entrusted if we live, I'm 78, okay? If we live, to be 78, it's a moment. It's just a moment in eternity. So we better sign on for eternity in this mini moment we have. Right. We ought to listen to the children, first of all, as Wordsworth said, so lately come from God, trailing clouds of glory. They've got some stuff to tell us. 
until we teach it out of them. Wow, until we teach it out of them. And so Sheesh. we better listen while we're here, while they're here. Listen to the children and and then listen to the agent because they've made all the mistakes. They've done all the stupid things. They have tried all the habits. They've tried the substitutes for eternity. They've, you know, whatever the addictions or whatever the mistakes or whatever the divorces or whatever has happened at some point, especially for those who really give their lives to God, they've got a perspective we better listen to. We not, we better not just listen to 30 year olds. Or right. forty years, right? We all need to listen to each other, and as you know, as the the children grow, I I think of, of Mia and Liam now. They're I can't believe it. They're eleven and thirteen. Wow, my babies. But but Mia, the thing she says, and Liam, he is so he is so tender and insightful. I mean, I bow at his shrine. That baby. <laughs> and say, teach me, teach me what you see. And what he sees is me without any of my screens. And sometimes that's scary. And sometimes it's re it's reassuring. You never know which one you're going to get with a kid. They're going to tell you the truth. So anyway, now is forever. And, it, and, and I wrote a song like 20 years ago and the vocal band just recorded it. It will be on their, this new project, but it says now is forever. Forever starts here. The things that I value will show in the mirror. And, and, and life carves its carves its crevices on our faces. And what does that say? And wrinkles can be beautiful if they're on a beautiful person. Or if they are on a mean person, they carve the same. They carve it on your face. But the things that I value will show in the mirror. Because now is forever. Forever starts here. If we sign up for that, dying is no big deal. The process of getting there might be a big deal. Right. Right. But, but death is like you say, it's a fresh breath. Now, you know, there is, uh, there is something that I want to make the people, you know, there's a, there's a few people who listen to me, and I want to make them aware of something. And that is, I know that if, you're, if you are a regular uh, subscriber, if you're a regular listener or watcher of this podcast, you're already getting ready to go Google Glory Gaither and find her songs and listen to her songs. But, and you will find distilled thought in those songs. But there is another place that I have found that I can mine the wisdom from Glory Gaither. And, and that is uh, in your blog. I I am such a fan when you started doing that and just started writing your thoughts and nothing really had to rhyme, <laughs> you know, right. I, I, I it thought seems so undisciplined. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it is just, I, I am such a fan and we're, and I want to make sure that we, we are going to provide a link uh, on on the show notes here, we'll provide a link to your blog and to the homepage, everything that we can to get people to you. Because I want to, people to be able to read what your thoughts are. To me, that that blog is is. Uh, it, I, I think there. I think the difference in your blog and your songwriting is like you say about the difference in children and older people. Because when we listen to children, there is a purity. There is, a, there is an immediacy. Uh, there is a first blush, a first impression. And from the elderly, we get the well thought out. And so mm, from... Feel. 
Yeah, and so from lyrics, I think we get the well thought out. But with your blog, I, I, that has filled a need in my life when I can't go down the hall and have coffee with you and say, so what are you thinking today, Gloria? I mean, I, because. Well, I just, I'm glad you brought that up only for this. There wouldn't be a blog, I think, if it hadn't been for you and Marty Grubbs, because you, well, I had no idea what a blog was. And, and I, so I'm just, I, you're right. I just puking my thoughts out onto the paper, like, whoa. Okay. And, and, and you guys would, would say, keep telling, she keep doing this, keep this. Like I, I said, well, I don't even know. I don't know how, how long a blog supposed to be. I don't know what you, you, do you put pictures on a blog? Do you, you know, what do you do? And you kept saying, keep going, keep going. So yeah. thank you. Well, and you honestly, have no idea how many times I've stopped people and said, okay, stop here. Just listen to this. Let me just read this to you. And I've read your blog to them. I mean, it's just. Well, so, I just anyway. wrote, you know, I, I, I thought when, when I d- was trying to figure out what, what a blog was and what I should do, I just said, I'm just going to write love letters to my life. I'm just going to write, I'm going to make myself aware of a beauty that is mine, mine to live and experience. I'm going to, I'm going to write a love song to my life. So I won't miss it. And you know, songs are like that. Songs are like the stakes you drive in the ground as you mature as, uh, uh, as a Christian, or, you know, if it's rock and roll, or if it's, you know, country music, your love affairs, you, you know, didn't go well or whatever they do, but Songs are like driving a stake down. Okay, I've come this far and I've learned this. So I thought, okay, if that's what a song is, then then I want to just write every day love notes to my life. I don't want to miss the gifts life is giving me. I don't want to stumble over the miracles asking God for a miracle. And I think we do that. (laughs) Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Every day. Every day we stumble over a bunch of miracles and about, you know, like when we're saying, oh, God, I need a miracle. It's like, okay, I sent three ships to pick you up off of the flood roof. Yeah. Yeah. And you said, I'm waiting for a big ship. What? You know. Right. So so I said, I'm going to commit this blog is going to be my commitment to myself to not miss what God is bestowing in my life every day. And I think I'm what gonna... you do. I, th- I think what you do well in that blog, and probably probably better than anybody that I've ever read. And I'm just thinking about this. I, I've gotten uh, very interested. I'm I'm not a great photographer, but I I love doing that. I love taking pictures, and I've gotten very interested in going down really close on something. I don't know if there's anything. About, yeah, like, like that well, one right behind you, the scales yeah. of a fish, I think, is that? That's right. That's right. That's the scales yeah. of a red, a red snapper. And, yeah. and so it's like, okay, what does this look like when you get right in close? So I think there are a lot of people who can write from a, you know, from a big view and say, okay, this, but what I love about, Love songs to my life. What I love about your blog, some of my favorites are like there was one that you wrote about the the flowers that came up in your yard after that tree had fallen, and just man, you're getting right down on it. I just love that. Yeah, that was. I mean, and 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 life is giving you that every day. Like we had that horrible rainstorm. I mean, it, it was it was awful, and it uprooted trees that have been here fifty years in our house, and took them down. And then I went outside, and those they're called naked lilies. They they come up in the spring with leaves. They look like a lily's going to come up, but it never comes up. The leaves just die, and become a part of the soil. And then about. Oh, August, when everything's so hot, you can't even stand it and nothing is blooming because it's all fried. Here come these naked lilies, no leaves, this big tube. It's like a straw full of water, this big tube of a stem with these amazing, delicate pink lilies on the top. 
after all those trees had fallen in our yard, I went out and here is the naked lilies are all over my garden. I was like, okay, how do you, how do you do a little flesh filled with water stem and withstand this storm that was beating everything to a pulp, including the crops. And here are the naked lilies. Amazing. And I was like, amazing, amazing. Yeah. Does that mean that if the storm blows down our whole stupid government, I can still stand fragile in the beauty of God's sunshine after the storm? Can I do that? You know, every day is like that, Andy. There's one every day. And I just don't want to miss it. I don't want to miss it. This is why I listen to you. You know, uh, New Year's Day, I was reading, and I read a verse in Isaiah that I've, I, I've, I've heard this a million times, and it somehow hit me a totally different way. And, you know, because we were everybody's concerned about the government and you know the, this and that, and you voted that and this and this and that, and it's just it's gotten insane. And and you know, then there's people that saying, well, you know, God wants this, and then God wants this, and it, it's, you know, God wanted me to run for office. No, God wanted me to run for office. I, I, it's, it's just so, and then I read this, and it was uh, the prophecy about the child being born. And I had never considered the part that said, the government will be on his shoulders. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know, okay. He's carrying is, it. I don't have to. <laughs> yeah, this is not something I have to worry about so much, you know, because the government's on his shoulders, not mine. Mm -hmm. It also says that he will be a tender reed. Okay, that's the naked lily. This fragile... Who would ever think that the God of the cosmoses, we are now learning that God is way bigger than we ever thought. And that, that, that God, that God would decide to become a zygote. You know what that is? It is the seed, it is the cell that, that combines with a female and male cell that combine together to make a zygote, a, a new thing. Okay, how far, if you say God doesn't care about me, he's a big God, he's out there, you know, and he wound up the universe one time and he went away to, no, 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 no. This great God did wind up the universe, but he decided to reduce himself to a zygote, a combination of a young girl and the God of the cosmoses to come all the way to where I am. And he came as a helpless baby. And I read, a, I was reading a devotional the other day, which I to totally disagreed with, which said, <laughs> well, we like to talk about the baby Jesus because he doesn't demand anything of us. So we love to have Christmas and we love to talk about the manger because that a baby doesn't demand anything of us. I said, this has, has to be written by a male who it wasn't married, funny. who wasn't married and never had to have a baby in his life. Are you kidding? <laughs> From the very beginning, God become this fragile all the way to where we are. You can't get any farther than he came for us. But however, from day one, he demanded our total commitment. He didn't force it. He was a baby. We could have left him out in the rain and he would have died. He would have died 33 years earlier. No, no. He demanded the total commitment of Mary and Joseph to take care. Can you imagine riding on a donkey all those miles and then nine months pregnant? No wonder she went into labor. Are you kidding? And then she had to ride home. That's another experience that only a mother would know. <laughs> you're hind in all, you know, raw. 
from having a baby and you get back on the donkey? <laughs> Are you kidding? And not only that, is she riding with a newborn, you know, healed whatever to to hold this baby. She's got to nurse this baby. She's got to keep him alive till they get back to Nazareth. I'm saying he demanded our total commitment from the beginning, but he didn't make us. He just said, if you're going to know this God of the universe, you got to commit to everything from day one. And anybody has said, well, we can be nice about a baby because it makes no demands. Never had a baby. <laughs> ah, see, that's something that you would notice. I love. Oh, that. yeah, you think? <laughs> I, I love that. Oh, my gosh. And he's still making a total, total, a demand of total commitment from us, but he never forces us. But you are changed. I'm changed by this puppy I have. So, you know, three children, I was like, are they ever going to be grown and gone from me? Never. Not until I can't breathe anymore. Right. And I said to Benji one day, and he called me not long ago to say it back to me. I said, Benji, you will never know how much I love you until you have children. And he called me one day and he said, Mom, one time you told me I'd never know how much you and dad love us until we had children. And you were so right. You know, nothing would keep me from helping these children. Okay. That's the investment God made in us. You know, he makes a demand so that we can give and go back to the government. You know, I think government should be um, generous and care about their people. That's, part of what a democracy is to, to get down to the people. But I'm just saying that's a demand for me. I have no right to scrape that off on the plate of the government because you know how efficient the government is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it, and if you take this, you know, some big allotment of money, by the time it gets to my neighbor across the street who needs milk delivered every day, how much of that big appropriation you think is going to get to them? And how is the government going to find them? I am the one that knows the need. So I can't go to a voting booth and say, well, I'm going to vote this way or that way because then they'll take care of my responsibility. No. What Christians do, and the reason Christian organizations are more effective. I remember with Colson. The government came to him and said, your, your rate of uh, success with prisoners not coming back is 80, 80 to 90 percent. Could you put that in our prisons, but leave the Jesus part out? And Colson said, you don't understand. It is the Jesus part. So I, I'm just saying a cup of cold water in his name is wetter. Because my hand comes with it. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. You know, I, I, I can't keep you any longer. I can ask you to do this again. But I, I want to read something that you wrote that I printed out. And, and I have... Uh, I've always been in, I, I, I've always just kind of been in awe of this. This is not necessarily one of your better known lyrics. By the way, Gloria, you had to be, you and Bill had to be just, it just blown away when the COVID thing was happening and people were starting to shelter and they showed those pictures of those high rises in Brazil with people out on the balconies. Singing out of the windows. Amazing. Sing, I, singing because he lives and singing your songs. I, I, I was just blown away at nighttime and all those voices coming from all those balconies. I, 
I thought, what must Bill and Gloria think? Well, yeah, it was overwhelming. It's overwhelming. So these these are words that I, I just want I want to read to the audience, and this is something that came from Gloria, came through Gloria, and I just I just love this. Here here it is. I then shall live as one who's been forgiven. I'll walk with joy to know my debts are paid. I know my name is clear before my father. I am his child, and I am not afraid. So greatly pardoned, I'll forgive my brother. The law of love I gladly will obey. I then shall live as one who's learned compassion. I've been loved, that I'll risk loving too. I know how fear builds walls instead of bridges. I'll dare to see another's point of view. And when relationships demand commitment, then I'll be there to care and follow through. Your kingdom come, and through and in me. Your power and glory, let them shine through me. Your hallowed name, oh, may I bear with honor. And may your living kingdom come in me. The bread of life, oh, may I share with honor. And may you feed a hungry world through me. I I don't know that there's anything else to say, but thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. And um, I just want to say that I'm seeing behind you this new place you've created. Can I come and go through it? Please. I cannot wait for you to be here at Wisdom Harbor. That would just be that would just be the greatest thing. You guys so, have to come. I, I want to come. And I think that is a great thing for you to do because you're such a people person. You have got to meet folks. Well, this is certainly going to do it. I think we, we're all in glass right here, and so uh, I and I know that you and Bill like to come to beaches and different oh. beaches, and so choose us next. Choose us next. We will as soon as we can hug. We'll be there. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you, Gloria. Thank you so much. I will talk to you soon. Thank you, Andy. Have a great day. I'm Andy Andrews, the professional noticer, harnessing common sense and wisdom to plow through challenges all the way to an answer for you. And I think that'll do it for this week. Get us out of here, Matthew. So, ladies and gentlemen, and to the boys and girls who aspire to become ladies and gentlemen, we have reached the end of another episode of The Professional Noticer. In a world where common sense has become a superpower, I'm harnessing that tiny bit of mental energy I have for you. Seeking wisdom, making observations, and endeavoring to answer tough questions in a way that will empower your family and your business. I'm Andy Andrews. Until next week, smile while you talk. Even behind that mask, don't breathe anyone else's air. Not time to do that yet. But make sure you have a positive answer to the question, hey, how's it going? And so, until next week, goodbye. This episode of The Professional Noticer was produced by Matt Limpert. The Noticer theme written and performed by Sugarcane J. Tuning forks provided by Twinkle and Smoke of Beverly Hills. Additional financial consideration provided by MallPianosForSale.com. Are you old enough to remember when the malls were the place to shop? Think back now. We aren't talking about the dilapidated gang hangouts that exist now with mostly closed storefronts, a mostly empty maze of 12 cinemas, one pizza place, and a massage parlor operated by a guy named Ernie. No, we mean the beautiful malls. Malls with places like Hallmark and Orange Julius and Tivana, Jimboree and Banana Republic, Pottery Barn, Baskin Robbins, and... Piano stores. Do you remember the piano stores? Piano stores were in every great mall. 
it must have seemed like a good idea to someone, but as it turned out, a piano was not quite the impulse by a sweater or a coffee cup could be. There just weren't a lot of people in malls on a Friday night who said to each other, you know, while we're here, we might as well pick up a piano. Now the malls are in disrepair. The piano stores are closed, and we have those like new pianos in our warehouse. Steinways, Yamahas, Kauai, we have them, and they're cheap. Get them while they last. After all, don't you owe it to your kids to make them take piano lessons like your parents made you do? That's mallpianosforsale.com. John Thompson, book one, free with every purchase.